Let's get started. Number 10. The Brain's Detox Hour You might think your brain is always awake, scrolling, calculating, worrying. But around the 25-minute mark of deep meditation, something eerie begins to happen. It starts to clean itself. Scientists call this the glymphatic flush, a cerebrospinal fluid surge that washes away toxic proteins like beta amyloid, the same one linked to Alzheimer's. But here's the weird part. This brain cleaning doesn't only happen during sleep. If you manage to stay in a calm, deep, meditative state long enough, your brain begins mimicking sleep while you're still awake. In MRI scans, monks who have meditated daily for decades show a peculiar pattern. Parts of their prefrontal cortex and posterior cingulate cortex go offline, while others light up like a neon sign. It's as if the brain says, you're conscious, but I'm taking out the trash. And people who've tried 30 minutes a day for a month report something uncanny. A kind of afterglow, where noises seem softer, time slows down, and small annoyances lose their sting. One participant in a Harvard mindfulness study said, It felt like I was walking through life in slow motion, but in a good way. This isn't just placebo. Researchers found that even beginner meditators after 30 days showed measurable changes in gray matter density in the hippocampus, the brain's memory, HQ. In other words, a month of calm might literally rebuild the hardware of your mind. But beware. Not all detox feels pleasant. Around week two, many report mental purging, vivid dreams, resurfacing regrets, or even tears for no reason. It's your brain scrubbing away old emotional residue. So yes, 30 minutes of stillness might clean your mind, but it won't be gentle. Number nine, the mirror mind effect. Here's something strange. After 30 days of daily meditation, people start to notice they feel other people's emotions more vividly. You might cry watching commercials. You might feel someone's anger before they even speak. It's not mysticism, it's neurology. The brain's mirror neuron system, the cluster that allows you to feel empathy, becomes hyperactive. Studies show long-term meditators have up to 20% more gray matter in the insula and temporal parietal junction, regions responsible for emotional awareness and compassion. It's as if meditation turns your brain into an emotional amplifier, but this sensitivity comes with a catch. Too much empathy can cause emotional burnout, a phenomenon psychologists now call compassion fatigue. One Tibetan monk described it like this. You start to see everyone suffering like light under their skin. But there's an antidote. The more grounded your awareness, the less those feelings consume you. It's like learning to see storms without getting wet. The mirror mind is a double-edged gift, one that makes you more human, but also more fragile if you don't anchor it. And after 30 days, most beginners start to sense it, the quiet but unmistakable shift from thinking about emotions to feeling them fully. That's when you know meditation isn't just relaxation. It's perception, raw and unfiltered. Number eight, the time collapse. Ever notice that when you're anxious, time crawls, but when you're calm, it melts away? After 30 days of consistent meditation, your perception of time changes drastically, sometimes frighteningly so. Researchers from UC Berkeley found that meditators report a phenomenon called temporal compression. In deep focus, the brain's internal clock, regulated by the basal ganglia and prefrontal cortex, begins to lose its usual rhythm. To put it simply, the brain stops measuring time in seconds and starts sensing it in moments. That's why some people say, I meditated for what felt like five minutes, only to discover an hour had passed. Others experience the reverse. A few minutes feel eternal. In Buddhist tradition, this is known as entering the timeless state. In neuroscience, it's called chronoception distortion. Either way, it's the same message. When you stop chasing time, your brain stops counting it. This is also why, after a month of practice, meditators often describe life as less rushed. They are not slower. They're simply no longer ruled by the ticking clock in their skulls. Ironically, to gain more time, you first have to lose track of it. Number seven, the phantom self. Around week three, something truly bizarre starts happening to regular meditators. The boundaries between you and everything else begin to blur. In one study from Yale, researchers found that meditation quiets activity in the default mode network the brain circuit responsible for self-referential thinking, that inner voice narrating your life, the one constantly saying, I, me, mine, it starts to fade. For some, it's blissful. For others, it's terrifying. You might feel like you're floating outside your body or that your thoughts are no longer entirely yours. It's called ego dissolution. And while it sounds like something out of a psychedelic trip, meditation can trigger it naturally. One participant in a 30-day retreat described it like this. I looked at my hand and couldn't tell where I ended and the world began. This isn't madness, 
It's your brain breaking down the illusion of separateness. It's been maintaining your whole life. But it's also why many spiritual traditions warn beginners. Do not mistake emptiness for enlightenment. In that quiet vacuum, you start realizing how much of your suffering is tied to identity, to stories you've been telling yourself for years. The phantom self fades, and for a brief moment, you experience pure awareness. Just you. Without you. But tread carefully. Losing the self feels liberating, but rebuilding it afterward, that's the real challenge. Number six, the emotional unloading. If you meditate every day for 30 minutes, you're not just sitting still. You're opening the attic of your mind, and guess what's been hiding up there? Everything. Old anger, forgotten heartbreaks, childhood embarrassments that still make you cringe. At first, meditation feels peaceful. Then suddenly, it feels like emotional turbulence. That's because your mind finally stops distracting itself long enough to process what it's been avoiding. Psychologists now refer to this as the rebound effect. When suppressed emotions resurface once mental noise goes quiet, it's your subconscious knocking saying, hey, we need to talk. People often report crying during meditation without knowing why. Others feel sudden bursts of laughter or intense fear. One neuroscientist called it psychological detox. But here's the strange beauty. Those feelings don't destroy you. They release you. When you stop resisting them, emotions flow like weather systems. Heavy rain, thunder, then blue sky again. By the end of 30 days, many practitioners report an emotional lightness that feels unnatural, as if years of tension simply evaporated. Meditation doesn't erase pain. It teaches your mind to stop carrying it like luggage. Number five, the body electric. Something electric happens, literally. When you meditate daily, your body's electromagnetic field shifts measurably. The heart rate variability, HRV, increases, meaning your nervous system becomes more adaptable. You're no longer stuck in fight or flight mode. Your vagus nerve learns to dance between stress and calm like a switchboard operator. But there's another phenomenon that freaks some people out. Spontaneous body movements, twitches, tremors, or waves of heat that rise from the spine. In Eastern traditions, it's called kundalini awakening. In neuroscience, it's explained as the brain rebalancing neural activity across hemispheres and muscle groups. Either way, it feels strange. People describe tingling in their palms, a gentle pulsing in the forehead, or warmth spreading through their chest. It's not mystical. It's biology catching up with awareness. The more your body relaxes, the more energy it stops wasting on tension. And that freed energy has to go somewhere. So, if you ever feel like you're buzzing after meditation, congratulations. That's your body remembering how to breathe in peace. Number four, the dream reboot. Around the fourth week, your dreams start getting weird. Not, I'm flying through broccoli fields weird, more like emotionally cinematic weird. People who meditate daily for 30 minutes often report more vivid story-like dreams that feel strangely meaningful. Neuroscientists at the University of Wisconsin discovered that meditation increases REM density, the amount of rapid eye movement during sleep. This means that your brain processes emotions and memories more deeply at night. Essentially, meditation doesn't just change your waking mind. It rewires your dreaming one. But the twist? Many meditators start noticing lucid fragments. Moments in dreams when they suddenly realize, wait, this is a dream. And that awareness, born from meditation, lets them influence the dream's direction, turning nightmares into conscious stories. One participant in a sleep study said, I was running from something in a nightmare. Then I realized... I could just sit down and breathe. The monster disappeared. That's meditation bleeding into your subconscious, teaching even your sleeping mind not to panic, not to run, but to observe. After 30 days, the result is often fewer nightmares, deeper sleep, and mornings that feel like waking from therapy instead of chaos. It's the mind's way of saying, I've got this. Rest now. Number three, the focus paradox. Here's the irony. The more you sit doing nothing, the sharper your focus becomes. Meditation has been found to thicken the anterior cingulate cortex, the part of your brain that manages attention and self-control. In plain English, your mental breaks get stronger. You stop reacting to every ping, buzz, or intrusive thought, like a goldfish with Wi-Fi. But the strangest part? You start noticing your distractions before they even form. You'll catch yourself about to grab your phone and stop. You'll sense irritation rising, and it dissolves before it hits. In neuroscience, this is called meta-awareness. It's awareness of awareness, a mental mirror that lets you see your mind in motion. After 30 days of practice, your mind becomes like a cat watching a laser pointer, alert, calm, and utterly focused on the present moment. But don't mistake this for constant zen. You'll still get distracted. You'll just stop taking it personally. And that subtle difference? 
That's mental freedom. Number two, the reality filter breaks. When you meditate long enough, your brain stops taking its own storytelling so seriously. Colors look richer, sounds feel deeper, time stretches, and you realize reality has always been this vivid, you were just too busy to see it. In psychological terms, meditation decreases top-down processing, the brain's habit of filtering the world through assumptions. When those filters loosen, you experience things directly, like a child seeing rain for the first time. But this clarity can also be unsettling. Many first-time meditators say, it's like someone turned up the brightness on life, and I can't turn it down. That's because you're no longer running on autopilot. You're perceiving raw data, not the story you used to tell about it. This is why ancient teachers described awakening as both bliss and burden. Because once the filter breaks, you can't unsee the truth. Most of your suffering came from your own commentary. The world didn't change. You did. Number one, the self-reset. And finally, the strangest thing that happens when you meditate for 30 minutes every day for 30 days. You start to feel like you've met yourself for the first time, not the self you perform for others, not the anxious chatterbox rehearsing tomorrow's arguments, but the quiet, observing self that was there all along, waiting under all that noise. Psychologists call this decentering, the ability to view thoughts and emotions as passing events, not personal definitions. Spiritual traditions call it awakening. Neuroscientists, they call it neural integration. Different words, same effect. The brain's networks, emotional, logical, and sensory, start firing in harmony instead of competition. The result is profound calm that doesn't feel forced. You stop chasing happiness and start noticing peace where it already was. After 30 days, most people describe a quiet shift. Traffic doesn't bother them as much. Arguments don't sting as deeply. Even boredom becomes strangely comfortable. It's not that life stops being chaotic. It's that you no longer confuse chaos with identity. That's the hidden reward of meditation. It's not becoming someone new. It's remembering the person you were before the world told you who to be. So if 30 minutes of silence can reset your brain, emotions, sleep, and even your sense of self, the question isn't why meditate anymore. It's why haven't you started yet? That's it for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.